Hello and welcome to Reptiles and Research. So, what's the best humidity for a ball python? And is your ball python having shedding issues? Well, watch this video to the end and we're going to solve your problems. So, what is the best humidity for a ball python? Well, that kind of depends on what they get in the wild. What our ball pythons actually evolved to live in will play a huge factor in how we should keep them in captivity. So, what I've done is I've taken the three countries that our ball pythons originated from and I've taken weather stations from each part of the country's range. So, at the northernmost part of their range, sort of like midway down, and at the southern ranges of three countries and a few extra weather stations chucked in there. And what I've done is I've collected weather data from all the way back to 1985 and I've merged it all into one super graph. So, this one big super graph is what I'm going to recommend. We based our bull pythons care upon. So if you look at this monthly humidity graph, you can see from December to around February is our driest periods in the wild. But take the word dry with a grain of salt because it's not really dropping below 50% and 50% plus is considered like higher humidity. But if you look for the majority of the time, the humidity in the wild, the ambient relative humidity in the air in the wilds of Africa, mostly in the area of like 60% to like going on 90%. Now, because this area of West Africa is so equatorial and so consistent with temperatures and humidity and their climate is very consistent, you could probably take a safe range of around 60 to upwards of 90% and keep it, try and keep it at that all year round. Realistically, because it's so flat in the wild, that's probably going to do your ball python a world of good. And if we look at this next graph, our humidity actually matches our merged monthly rainfall as well. So, so they get their least amount of rainfall during the months of December to February. And then you can see it ramps up from May onwards. So in the wild, they have a wet season and a dry season. It's not the same as us in our northern areas where it's like summer, autumn, winter, spring. It's very much wet, dry. So the dry season would be in what we would consider the winter months of December to February. But for the most part, we have an initial first rainy season and a, a sort of secondary rainy season in the wilds of Africa as well. So that basically matches our humidity graph. So what I recommend is we spray our enclosures often. We spray water onto our substrates and objects within our Python's tank. What that's going to do is we've got a moisture retaining substrate is that moisture is going to retain that it's going to soak that up so that when we heat and warm our enclosures it's going to heat and warm the substrate and over time that substrate is going to release its water content in the form of evaporation and that's going to release water into the air in terms of relative humidity in the enclosure so we can spray daily if not every other day depending what the ambient humidity in the room that we're keeping them in and use spraying with water to maintain our humidity levels. So within that range of 60 to 80 percent all year round is what I would do. You, you can also do things like take a nice big water bowl and then place that in the enclosure. The bigger the water bowl obviously the bigger the surface area and the more that that water evaporates. The more it evaporates the more relative humidity in the enclosure rises. If you're really in an area where you've got a dry environment, you've got a tank in, you can limit ventilation slightly and you can also do things like take your water bowl and put it on the warm side. After the warmer the water, the more it's going to evaporate. Also, just because it's high humidity above ground doesn't mean it's like dry beneath ground. Actually, if you look at any documentaries where they've gone into the wild and they've looked at during even during the, the dry periods, they take the humidity levels of these burrows that these bull pythons are sitting in during the day and it's upwards of up to 100% humidity. So what I recommend is that you take one hide in your bull python's tank and you either turn that into a humid hide by stuffing that full of moss and that's a moist moss that you spray down to keep it moist. Again, moist moss, a little hot, humid microclimate that a bull python can go into. Even if you, you skip a day or you forget or you're at work and the tank dries out, this little microclimate, this little burrow, is going to stay to like high humidity for your ball python to like use as a refuge. So I recommend doing that at the very, very least, lifting up a hide and spraying down the, the substrate beneath the hide heavily. It's going to do wonders for actually keeping humidity 
beneath this hide and make it this little microclimate just like in the wild. And the other trick that I would give you is substrate depth. Obviously if you've got a substrate that's like this thick, once it evaporates and dries, the upper level is going to dry the fastest because the layer beneath it is locked in as a human microclimate. But if it's that thin, the entire depth of it can evaporate and dry out quite quickly. Whereas if it's this thick, yeah, the upper level might dry off a little bit, but underneath it's going to be this human microclimate that's locked in for, for your ball python to like root down and get into should they need to. Another trick is to add like leaf litter to the top level of the substrate. What this does is it makes another barrier that locks moisture in down beneath. And it like almost is a buffer where it slowly releases the humidity rather than as a flash in the pan of like water evaporating and then leaving the enclosure. Now, what if your ball python is having shedding issues? Shedding issues occurs from parasites or it occurs from poor nutrition or it occurs from poor hydration or poor environmental humidity because it's a bull python eating frozen thawed i would imagine it's got good nutrition because you you can't really mess it up you're just giving it one whole prey item parasites you should be aware if your snake has mites if it doesn't good then what we're lacking here is either hydration internal hydration or the humidity is lacking in the environment the hydration can be sold with giving them a nice big water bowl to drink from. Again, make sure you're cleaning that water bowl and refreshing the water daily, if not second daily. But I mean, really, what I see is from my years of working in pet stores, I've seen a bull python go a week without fresh water. And I've cleaned their water bowl, given them fresh water, and they've come straight over in a guzzling water. I think that once water goes a bit stale and goes a bit old, I think animals hold off because naturally they want to go for like fresh water sources. If you think in the wild, what are you going to go for? The nasty old puddle or after a flash of rain, the freshly new formed puddle that is still like relatively clean. They're going to go for the fresh new puddle. So by making sure you're fre refreshing water as often as possible, then your bull python is going to be drinking as much as it wants and it's not holding off for periods and like getting a little bit less hydrated and dehydrated internally. Secondly, you want to make sure that your humidity levels are what we've recommended in this video. If you get both of those two things right, your bull python shouldn't have a problem with its shedding issues. The third problem that might be occurring, giving it poor shedding issues if these things aren't correct, is that there's nothing rough enough in the enclosure to get them to start the shed from the nose. So what they do is they rub their nose against a rough object, split that outer layer of skin, and then it can peel back as they move through their environment in the enclosure, and it like pulls off like an inside out sock. But you want to make sure they at least have something rough to start that shed off in the first place by splitting the bit on their nose. If you want to know what temperature or how hot your tank should be to maintain these humidity levels, then I've got a whole other guide that I've made on this channel. If you want to see more bull python content and more guides for bull pythons, there's a lot more coming. So subscribe to this channel and keep an eye out for the videos that are coming out for you. Other than that, I'll see you in the next video.